So what are we doing today, guys? Well, what where are we heading to now? So we got an evening session, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's our last session, I think. Yeah, we're going to the chapel. Can I just tell you, this evangelism training has been on it's, a it's point. Been amazing. It's yeah. been spot, amazing. Spot on. Like <laughs> one thing that I've learned. One thing. That evangelism is an extension of what God has already done in Preach you Jesus. and Amen. is doing through you right Preach now. Yes. So you can't pull from an empty cup. you got to have that revelation of the gospel for yeah. yourself mm. to yeah. then extend it to the people. Mm. You know? You're I forgot angry. my mom. She's supposed to be on the stage. Where are we, guys? Why, Wham? What do you want to say to my subscribers? What, what is why I'm about? Oh man, it's to know God, to be intimate with Jesus, and then to make Him known all over the earth. Yes. Every nation will know and come and worship Jesus. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely true. <laughs> Christian women. Mm -hmm. Do I wear this jumper? Mm -hmm. Jesus healed me and set me free. Or oh, Jesus is king. Mm. Oh my gosh. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> and I Amen. just want to say to you guys right now uh. that nothing in this earth will satisfy. Oh. If I saw someone standing no. in the street with that, I'll be like, okay, what are they saying? <laughs> like, love never fails. Mm. And I think, I suppose if our like, motive is like love, then like whether it's like it seems like they've received it in the mo moment, it doesn't really matter because yeah. it's not like an agenda, like you have to have a certain response from someone. Yeah. So then, like, so, so men water and other men reap, but it's mm. because other people have sowed. Yeah, so, so true. like because you reap doesn't make you a good evangelist, it just means you've reaped where someone else has sowed. Yeah. <laughs> Isabella. Isabella. Uh, yeah. Let's pray. Come on, let's pray for these guys. Pray for the Lord. Let's do the same name of Jesus. We know that His power, His power from yes. your blood. So we are being commissioned right now. Um, well, actually, we spent the whole day praying, prophesying over one another, declaring. Um, then officially got commissioned by the leaders. And guys, I'm so wrecked. As in, like, I'm not taking good care of these lashes. I am constantly crying. We are packing and heading to Cambridge. And as soon as we get to Cambridge, then we're going to the mission field. So I'm excited. Off to Cambridge. That one. The first day um, that I arrived at the boot camp, I was praying beforehand, asking God where He'd want me to be. And you know, I was thinking, okay, Leeds, I feel led to go Leeds. Yeah, let's go Leeds. And I got there now, and they were like, yeah, we put you in teams already. So I was like, I was like, what? Like, I've been told that, you know, I could pray about where I wanted to go and then let them know where I wanted to go. But they said that there was a whole leadership team and they all made sure that the people were in the right places, going to the right placements and stuff like that. And they prayed over every name. Yeah, they told me that I was going to Cambridge. So I was like, uh, oof. I don't know about that one. I got to speak to, like, the person who's leading the Cambridge team. And her name's Connie, amazing and remarkable woman. Like, not even just a fiery evangelist, but she's a remarkable woman. Like, whenever she speaks, her energy, like, and her joy is so contagious. Like, my friend told me specifically that she asked Connie um, for me to go to Leeds. Um, and she was like, no, 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 I want, I want Isabella on my team. <laughs> Never met the woman, by the way, but she said she wanted me on her team. You know, I mentioned to Connie that I wanted to do open air preaching and she was jumping up and down saying oh my gosh like i feel god leading me to do um open air evangelism again and this is this is amazing because that's also on the schedule and it, it just seemed like everything was starting to make sense like the reason why i'm going to cambridge i'm working alongside connie and and that following day i had a dream that for people i'm um, going up on the stage and there was a mic and people were projecting their voice practicing for when it's time to like open air um preach and stuff like that like god is really gonna do something through connie in terms of training people up to open air preach 
So the other day, um, we approached a whole group of people, three girls and one boy, and I got to share the gospel with them, I got to share my testimony with them, and you could just see in their eyes that they were getting a bit teary-eyed, like, you can tell that you've captured them when they're, like, really looking intently at you. When I shared my testimony and, and they left, um, two of them came back, they, they, they actually ran towards me and was like, can we give you a hug? We were so touched, we were so impacted by your testimony. I was also evangelizing to another group of people. The same girls that, that, that asked for a hug were walking back a couple of hours later and I heard them like murmuring over there saying, you know, should, should we ask, should we ask, should we ask? And then they came and they asked for my Instagram. <laughs> the other day, we got to lead three different girls to Christ. Um, they were really touched, you know, they said that they learned about the creation in RE but they didn't know about the story of Jesus. Um, and so we got to share the gospel with them. And, you know, I asked them, is there any reason why, you know, you wouldn't want to accept Jesus today? And they were like, no. And I was like, would you, do you want to accept Jesus? You know, you, you've got to make sure when you're having these conversations that you're, you're not forcing it, but that, but that they really want it. And forcing them or forcing people doesn't really do much to the heart. You know, it, it won't bear lasting fruit. They really have to, be impacted by the love and the power of God and really, really believe. So yeah, we, we got to lead them into prayer. The, the, the girl that I was praying for, um, she she really was ready for that word. She was ready for the gospel because I was as I was praying for her, I was touching her shoulders, right? I was, I, I was touching her shoulders and she was, she, she held my hands while I was praying for her. Um, and I, as I was touching her, her, her shoulders and I was praying over her, she said that she felt like a warm feeling and she asked if she could hug me. Like, this is the second time that someone's asked if they could hug me. Uh, we got to, you know, prophesy over them, give some of them word of knowledge. All three of them decided to give their life to Christ that day. Um, and, you know, I also gave one of them my Instagram. So that's, that's amazing. All of this is happening constantly, constantly. The third day, I decided to open air preach. I also started worshipping on the piano, just doing all these spontaneous things. And people come in to listen and say, you got a beautiful voice. And I think one of the men um, that my teammates were speaking to genuinely couldn't engage in the conversation because he kept looking at me um, as I was worshipping. And, and he was just saying to, you know, my friend, it, it feels like I'm in a heavenly place. Like like this is amazing you know the worship is amazing the singing is great and and that's just an encouragement for you guys because i've always been insecure about that you know i'd always compare myself to other singing um singers and you know i can't do runs i can't hit high notes i can't do this i can't do that but god really wants to use what you what you already have you know because he's giving you that gift every good and perfect gift comes from above even if you don't think that you know you're in tune or you sound good do it anyway because you we we are carriers of his presence and his glory and he's anointed you for such a time as this and it's all about being obedient you know and i i wanted to make sure that i grabbed every opportunity to to make sure that i was growing and stretching myself and being uncomfortable the other day we we were doing outreach for five hours and i was just so tired so so tired i was even verbally abused by um one man the other day and he was swearing at me and i was saying god bless you you know have an amazing day and that same guy again verbally abused me again today um <laughs> so we just thank god because even the disciples were rejoicing when they were when they found themselves worthy of suffering so if you're sharing the gospel and they reject it they are rejecting god not you so if you're gonna evangelize if you're gonna do outreach if you're gonna share the faith you cannot be insecure you cannot be insecure because when you're insecure you take things personally and this isn't a this isn't about you it's not about you and it's not about what people think of you it's about simply doing god's work and what he's called you to do if someone has rejected you and refused to to to, to listen to it fine you go into the next person you cannot deny someone's day of salvation just because somebody has rejected you god cares that he wants to bring hope to our city with joy with the with the group and then we kind of split up so she was with the woman that she was praying for and then i prayed for the woman ramona um i was asking god you know god give me a word for her i ended up showing um sharing a story about you know my my previous abortions and she started tearing up she started tearing up after i shared the testimony and she was like i've had a miscarriage and 
I was like, Lord, wow. Yeah, she had church hurt. So she was a bit more like reserved, guarded, like everything that we were saying. She was like, yeah, yeah, but yeah, but she knew everything about Christianity, but she, she, she needed that, that intimacy restored, right? So I got to pray for her. This is like the fourth time this week that someone's asked to hug me because they just felt the power of God. Yeah. And she was running to a bus and then she came back and hugged me again and was like, thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> And uh, so we, we said, well, do you know the gospel, Joshua? Did you know the story? So we told Joshua about the whole story of Joshua and Caleb and how God used Joshua to, you know, go in and lead the people into the promised land. Anyway, then we said, can we share with you? Do you have a, do you know why you're here? Do you know the purpose of, of man? And he said, no. And we went through the gospel yes. story. You know, he wanted to give his life to the Lord. Exactly. And we got to pray for him. And, and then we said, to, we said to Caleb, Caleb, now you need to go baptize him with your father, who's the pastor. Yes. And then you've got a disciple, and you can teach him how to fear God and love God. And then you can read the Bible together, and then two, the two of you can go into the nations and bring the kingdom of God in. So, I was so amazing. Yeah. Was so amazing. Yeah. Do you know, Emily... Isabella went over and shared with Emily, gave her the father's love letter and told her how much Jesus loved her. And then she was waiting for a bus. Well, I saw a girl sitting over there, so I went over there and she said, oh, I've already got a love letter. I said, oh, well, did you get a bracelet? She said, no. And I said, oh, can I quickly tell you what it means? And I shared the gospel. She gave her life to Christ. Woo! She said, I don't understand why my bus is so late. I said, I do, because Jesus wanted to find you today. We've been praying for you for weeks that you would have an encounter with the God who loves you. And, and Jesus saved her today. So what happened, guys? Uh, we just talked to two girls, yeah. um, Ali and Tia. Yeah. And we, yeah, we asked them if they know what the purpose of life is. And they were not really sure mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we give them a gospel bracelet and we explain what we think the purpose of life is mm -hmm. and we asked them if they had heard the story before of Jesus salvation and they said yes mm -hmm. um, but then we asked them if they had personal relationship with the Lord and they said no mm -hmm. so um, yeah we got to talk to them a little bit about faith and about how God wants to be in relationship with them and um, our personal stories with that yes. and um, then we asked them if they would like that for themselves and they said yes so we got to lead them to the Lord and they give their lives to Jesus yes. there must be a reason for our existence and you know what I have discovered I have discovered a glorious purpose and meaning in life and I just want to bless you guys to, to come into relationship with God I invite you we invite you to know God, to know Him, and it's only through Jesus Christ. It's only through His sacrifice. I'm saying to you guys, do you know the love of God? Because I know some of you guys have been hurt by other Christians. I know some of you guys have been hurt by other churches. But we're here to tell you today that Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you so much. Even when we were sinners, He died on the cross. See, some people are saying today, I don't want to give my life to Jesus because I'm not ready. So when will you be ready? When are you going to be ready? He thought of you on the cross. He died for those who, who, who may never love him back. And then we went over to this gentleman sitting on the bench behind me. Well, I, I started asking him, and then Joe also asked him if he had a personal relationship with the Lord, and if he like knew him, if he had ever given his life to him. And he said no. We asked him if that's something that he would want, and he said yes. And so we prayed with him and led him to Jesus. Today we met uh, this uh, sweet lady. Her name was August. And she was just seated on the bench looking at her phone and uh, Isabella just had in her spirit that we needed to talk to her. We asked her if we could share um, a destiny bracelet with her. So we gave her a bracelet and then we explained the gospel story and she had, she said that she had heard it before. And then we asked her if she had ever made like a personal commitment to Jesus and she said that she wanted to get baptized but that, um, yeah, but that she, and she had opportunity before to commit her life to the Lord but she didn't take it. And so then we asked if we could pray for her and we were able to pray with her and she gave her life to the Lord. What happened? She, you prayed for her and the power of God healed her leg? Yeah. Wow. And, 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 wow. 
Thank you, Lord. And your uncle. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Look at Jesus. Bracelets. Yeah, there's different color beads for for each. I guess maybe sage in the Destiny story. So the green, yeah. the green one, um, represents creation and how we've been created to fellowship with God. We were created with a purpose, and that is to worship Him and and walk with Him. And then the grey represents ashes, which um, is basically the fall of man, um, our spiritual death. Um, you know when sin came through one man and it speaks about how we disobeyed, we rebelled, we became our own gods. Because a lot of people think that they're good, mm -hmm. but that's the big lie and the big deception that no one's good. Jesus said no one's good except God alone. Mm -hmm. Are you a good person? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh really? Do you want to do the good person test? Mm -hmm. um, you know, have you ever told a lie? Have you ever taken anything that wasn't 100% yours? Have you ever looked at anybody with lust in your heart? He said, have you ever disliked anybody? I mean, so much that you, you know, hated them? I mean, oh, you have? So have I. Do you know, Jesus said that is the same to God as committing murder. Really? Yeah. And you know, that's just four of the Ten Commandments. We could go on. <laughs> the answer will be the same. Right? Have you ever disobeyed your parents? Yes. Have you ever taken God's name in vain? Yes. Have you, ever, you know, it just goes on like that. Um, there's ten commandments. We've broken them all. If you break one, you're guilty of breaking the whole law. You, you've just ad admitted to me that you're, you've lied, you've stolen, you've, you've committed adultery, you've committed murder, you've disobeyed your parents. I mean, are you guilty before God or not guilty? Hmm. Oh, guilty? I think you're right. If I could tell you how you could be stand before God and not be guilty, would that be good news? Oh, it would? Well, let me tell you that. <laughs> and then we go on to the red bead. Red, yeah. <laughs> well, red represents love um, and blood, basically, isn't it? When it comes to like evangelism, you, you really need to show people that they're in need of a savior or else the gospel isn't good news. Yeah. The gospel would just be like news. Jesus cried out, I thirst. Because you see, hell is a thirsty place. And, she, and it turned utterly dark when Jesus hung on the cross from 12 noon until 3 p.m. Hmm. Why? Because hell is a place, Jesus said, of utter darkness. And then Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mm. Why would Jesus say those words? Mm. He was one with the Father from eternity. Yeah. Well, it's because he didn't want you to ever have to say them. Mm. And so Jesus took on your sin and your shame and was guilty and paid the penalty for you. Mm. The white bead is a symbolism of resurrection, right? Woo! Her resurrection, resurrection and um, and forgiveness and forgiveness. Yeah. Please go tell the whole world. I've done it. Yeah. I paid the penalty for your sin. Go tell them that their sins can be forgiven. They can have a clean conscience and a pure heart. They can be holy again, mm. as I am holy. Woohoo! <laughs> Wouldn't you love a clean conscience? Oh yeah. <laughs> the blue bead. Jesus said, "I'm going to go back to the Father." But I don't want to leave you as an orphan. Mm. Because that's what we really are. You see, when, when God is not our, our father, our spiritual father, our spirits were orphans without a dad. Mm. And, and that's why, you know, we don't know why we're here. Mm. We don't know where we're going if we, if we die. Mm. Because we're lost, sons and daughters. And Jesus said, I'm going back to the Father, but I don't want to leave you like an orphan. When I get to heaven, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, my spirit, and he's going to come and live inside of you, and your dead spirit will be born again. Mm. Woo! Into the family of God as a son or a daughter. Hallelujah. And, and it's blue because the spirit, when he's inside, it, the Holy Spirit, he, he just bubbles up, right, with love and joy and peace. And, you know, it's just, it's glorious. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> and then, of course, we, we, we finish with the gold bead, but we can't afford gold. <laughs> so we just have a yellow bead. Because, you know, in heaven, gold is the pavement, right? 
<laughs> that's what they make roads with. But here, it's a bit more more costly. So, so, so we use this yellow because it represents eternal life. Yeah. You see, when you've received the Son of God into your life, when you've repented of your sins, when you've said, Jesus, you died for me, you know, I give you my whole life, I want you to be my Lord and Savior, then, then His Spirit comes in and you have eternal life. Yeah. Woo! I mean, is there any reason why you wouldn't want that? Yeah. Why today you wouldn't want to turn from your sin? Ask God to forgive you because of what Jesus already did for you on the cross by paying your death penalty. Mm. And then you can receive that forgiveness and invite Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. And His Holy Spirit will come in and you'll have that gift of eternal life. Hey everyone, as you can imagine, I have completed the 12-day boot camp. I believe that this boot camp stretch me it stretched me not only in the area of ministry ministry and you know outreach um being more bold and courageous um using every gift that god has given me but also personally these guys have really taught me you know serving even when you're not seen loving others unconditionally being compassionate um being kind being gentle in speech during devotion we would repent you know even if we felt irritated one of the girls like literally um repented for just being silent um at the dinner table and I, when i when i heard that i was just like wow this is this is crazy like everyone's so sensitive but not sensitive in terms of like being overly defensive but sensitive to other people you know sensitive to how they feel and that's just it's just so loving um i realized how much and i never realized that you know being irritated easily was was like such a sin it could be a sin towards others like you being irritated you you're you're likely going to sin against someone you're likely to upset someone you're likely to hurt someone's feelings so there's been a lot of like repentance um changing changing of my mind changing of my behaviors these are the things that you can only learn when you're when you're like with with people like things will test you things will stretch you and a lot of them couldn't have been learned if i was basically at home doing all of all of this by myself doing christianity by my by myself doing outreach by myself there is such a lesson that you can learn from being in a group you know being mentored under others observing others honestly it's amazing and this is what christianity is about it's about community it's about family it's about um the body you know it's about friendship it's about brothers sisters being around you to uplift you to cover you to help you to challenge you um to really stretch you to serve you to love you all of that kind of stuff you know there are people in my team who every single day have been doing a lot of work and i've not complained once like there's this guy in my team called steven and he would carry you know the guitar the piano the stand the whiteboard back and forth from the park to the car from the park to the car to the car back to the park and carrying so many heavy things like day in day out before before the outreach after the outreach and the, he wouldn't complain he would buy everything for us drive us everywhere and and he wouldn't complain there's a woman called um lucy who would you know um clean um constantly serve us even when she's not being seen even when you know um everybody's asleep or everybody's away she's cleaning up same same as joy you know she's cleaning up she's cooking whenever i was like afraid to step out or you know i just didn't feel like evangelizing she would drag me up and say no we're going to this place we're going to this person we're going to you know and i really needed that first thessalonians 2 4 says we speak as messengers approved by god to be entrusted with the good news our purpose is to please god not people and i used to think what does being entrusted with the gospel means what does what does speaking as if you're approved and i really understood that this week because guys it is so easy to preach a compromised gospel with the, with the intention to save more people through that compromised gospel god would rather you preach a whole gospel an, an undiluted gospel than for you to compromise it for the sake of saying oh i want a soul over it because you know what like i keep saying to you guys it will not bear lasting fruit when people find out the true cost of being a follower when people find out 
um, what they have to surrender, what they, ha what, what being a Christian is truly about. It's very important that when you pray for doors to be open, that you can discern when they have opened, because it's all good in that to pray for opportunities. Um, but if you're not taking advantage of it, then like when Paul was talking about how God trusted him with the gospel, when opportunities are being presented before me, God can trust me to preach the gospel. God can trust me to preach an uncompromised, undiluted gospel that every single day I would live my life preaching the good news, speaking to other people about the good news. I want to be trusted with the gospel to the point where I'm not afraid of the consequences. I'm not afraid of the cost of sharing it. I'm not afraid of being a fool for Christ. I'm not, I'm not afraid of being a madman for Christ. I'm not afraid of being reviled, being humili humiliated for the sake of of, of preaching the good news i'm not afraid of rejection i'm not afraid of when when you know people aren't pleased with what i'm saying um because at the end of the day you know the verse that i just shared with you guys says that we are not trying to please people but we are trying to please god people are going to test you on what you're preaching and your character is going to be evidence of what you truly believe what you truly feel conviction in when i'm preaching that god transformed me and when i'm preaching that god is love right and i have god within me that means in every reaction in every response it needs to be seasoned with grace when someone says you know something like what does god think about homosexuals what they are actually asking is does your god love gay people and that's when that's when you've got to be gentle as a dove and wise as a serpent because what they're asking you comes from somewhere what they're asking you comes from a certain hurt what they're asking you comes from a certain misunderstanding or something that they've heard you need to understand that you're not the first christian that everyone has come into contact with people have had church hurt in fact almost 70 percent of the people that we've spoken to has had church hurt there were, there were a group of boys that we were speaking to for us for such a long time i got to share my testimony with them um, Connie shared the gospel and um, they were really open to it they were so interested um, I got to pray um, over one of them and I just gave them my Instagram just in case they had questions and one of them messaged me and said you know they were speaking in the group chat they all agreed that you know what we were saying to them changed their perspective on a lot of things even if in that moment they didn't accept Jesus they still had seeds planted in them they, they had a change of perspective and you know what that's going to continue to be watered and that that is the work of god my favorite story has been us speaking to these group of girls you know you could be sharing the love of god when connie decided to preach the gospel proclaim the gospel and and share the destiny um story that's when things started to get a little bit shaky people who were open in the beginning started to get reserved they started to get defensive they started to mock they started to roll their eyes and stuff like that but there was um there was a couple in that group they were in a same-sex relationship and you know connie was preaching to them although um the other girls weren't interested anymore one of them was listening and you know what she was so intentional about her about listening to this story that she was telling all her friends to shut up they were mocking her they were um behind connie's back like making funny faces and stuff like that and the girl was telling them to shut up shut up i want to hear this shut up i want to hear this one of the girls had pain in her back and connie prayed for her and when connie prayed for her the girl called maddie she was the one who was op so open to listening saying um you know telling her friend shut up the girl called maddie almost felt the power she felt the power of the holy spirit she was like whoa <laughs> she, she was like whoa like what's happening here her girlfriend was like are you okay what's going on and she was like no, i'm gonna be okay i'm gonna be okay because she said i don't know what's going on at the time we wasn't aware it was the power of the holy spirit and so connie asked to pray for her and do you know what she said she said wow i'm having an awakening i think i'm having an awakening and so connie was like that is jesus do you want to do you want to accept jesus and she was like yeah although three of them were mocking her although three of them were trying to distract her from receiving the gospel trying to snatch that opportunity away from her she was open to it and she was ready her heart was ready in the beginning of the conversation she was touching her girlfriend after that it was just her alone it was just her alone broken broken knew that she needed a savior god really opened her eyes my gosh 
it was only the power of God. It was only the Holy Spirit. I could go on. I can go on and on and on. After being commissioned um, back home, one way in keeping the fire burning is to have community. And it always comes back to that. We were never intended to do this Christian walk by ourselves. Having fiery people around you keeps you on fire. As well as having intimate relationship with God and your daily devotions and, and your prayer life. But community really does make a massive difference. Dealing with other people stretches you. Having responsibility over people stretches you. Being in a community really does expose things in you that, that need to be given to God. Have community. And if you don't have community, find people and set them on fire. Set them on fire. My heart has so much that we don't have enough labourers. There is plenty of harvest. In fact, the harvest will always be there. The labourers, oh my gosh, we need more labourers, God. Please, please don't write off evangelism because you think that it's only for the evangelists. It is your calling to also share the gospel um, to all men, to all the earth. Um, to the ends of the earth, sorry. Thank you, thank you so much for sewing into my ministry. Um, because because of you guys, I've been able to use those funds to um, bless others in Cambridge. It's, it's been a blessing that you guys honestly um, just support me. So, love you guys and see you in the next video. Yeah.